Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here, and today we're diving into diminished chords. I remember when I first started experimenting with diminished chords, I would see them pop up in the songs I was learning, but even when I played the right notes to the chords, they just sounded bad. It sounded really awkward, no matter what I did. But over the years, I, I figured out how to make diminished chords sound natural and, and smooth, but also edgy. That's the beauty of diminished chords. They can smooth out transitions from one key to another, but you can also use them to add a whole bunch of bite and crunch to your music. So however you wanna use them, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make your diminished chords sound good. First, we have to define what a diminished chord is. I like to think of it as stacked minor thirds. So if we start with an F sharp, a minor third above that is A, a minor third above that is C, and a minor third above that is E flat. And there's F sharp diminished seven. Now, where does the chord come from? You might be thinking, okay, a diminished chord comes from a diminished scale. And while you can derive diminished chords from diminished scales, by the way, this is at least one of the diminished scales. That's called the whole half diminished scale because you're going between whole steps, half steps, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step. You can also do a half whole diminished scale. This is a bit of a tangent, but check it out. Half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step. So you have two versions of the diminished scale. Both versions have the diminished chord baked in. Now we're gonna come back to the diminished scale because there is value in knowing it. But to really understand where the diminished chord comes from, it's much better to focus on the harmonic minor scale. So let's take a look at my chord scale charts. Here I have the G harmonic minor chart open. And by the way, if you wanna download these charts, you can do so for free at the link in the description below. I have them for all of the major keys, all of the minor keys, and various minor scales like the natural minor, melodic minor, and of course, harmonic minor, which is what we have here. So if you take a look, we have G harmonic minor. It's G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, F sharp. And if you look at the last note, the seventh note there, we've got an F sharp diminished seven chord. You can build it up like this, F sharp, A, C, and E flat. So how does an F sharp diminished seven chord fit within the context of the key of G minor? Well, if you take a look at the five chord actually, D seven, we have D, F sharp, A, and C. There's actually a lot of similarities between these two chords. We have an F sharp here, an F sharp here, an A here, an A here, a C here, and a C here. And the E flat, well, if you think about that in terms of D7, it's actually a lot like a D7 with a flat nine. This chord right here. And if I take out the D, I'm left with F sharp diminished seven. So now that you understand the similarity between F sharp diminished seven and a D7, well, maybe you're familiar with how a five chord, this D7 is the five chord, you can see right there, I've got Roman numeral five. The five chord leads to the one. That's sort of like the foundation of Western harmony. If you go from a D major to G minor, you've got that classic 5-1 sound. F sharp does the same thing. F sharp diminished seven, that is, does the same thing. It goes to one. Listen to this. Here's F sharp diminished seven, resolving to G minor. Now you can also resolve to a major chord that gets into something called modal mixture, which we can get into in another video, but that sounds like this. Here's F sharp diminished seven, resolving to G major. That works too. The point is we've got this half step motion in the bass. F sharp going up a half step to G. Let's do one more example in another key. Let's go to C. So C minor using the C harmonic minor scale right here. And if you look, 
the seven chord is B diminished seven. The one chord in this case is C minor major seven because it's harmonic minor, but we'll just do C minor. So think B diminished seven going to C minor. Sounds like this. That half step motion. Now there are other harmonic use cases for diminished seven chords, but the most fundamental one is that seven going to one, F sharp diminished seven going to G minor or G major. But now we have to talk about why, regardless of how you're using the diminished seven chord, why it tends to sound awkward, out of place and, and kind of forced. One of the main reasons is that the diminished seven chord is a very symmetrical chord when you play it like so. This is the basic root position, closed position voicing, where you have an F sharp, an A, a C, and an E flat. As I said before, each one of those is a minor third. It's very symmetrical. Minor third, minor third, minor third. Now, symmetry isn't a bad thing, but too much of it can get a bit boring. And some asymmetry can actually add a lot of pleasing qualities to your sound. The same is true in other art forms. If you've ever studied design or photography or any visual art, maybe you've heard of the rule of thirds. So for example, let's say you're taking a picture at the beach and it's sunset. So here's your, your photograph. Rather than taking the picture with the horizon line right there in the middle of the frame, you'll get a more pleasing image if you put that horizon line about a third of the way down like that, or even a third of the way up. It's that asymmetry that gives the, the photograph a more pleasing look. And the same is true for music. So what we can do is add some asymmetry to the voicing. Instead of just stacking the minor thirds like that, we're gonna break it up a little. And the easiest way to do that is by going from a closed position voicing to an open position voicing. Here's what I mean. If you take out all of this and you pick one of these notes, let's take an A. You can move that A down the octave or up the octave. So it becomes the bottom note or the top note. Check it out. Here's F sharp diminished seven in closed position. If I take this A and I move it up an octave, I've got an open voicing and we have a variety of intervals now. Instead of just minor thirds, we've got this tritone here, a minor third, and another tritone up here. It breaks it up a little bit. Also, you can take the A and go down an octave, or you can do the same thing with the C. Take the C, move the C down the octave. This is something called drop two voicing. I'm taking the C, which is the second to highest note, that's what I mean by drop two. That's drop two. You take the second to highest note, which in this case is C, and you drop it down the octave. This single technique was one of the, the breakthroughs I had with my diminished chords, because as soon as I broke up all of that symmetry, everything started sounding better. So play around with taking one of these notes that lives inside the voicing and either move it up or down the octave. Either is going to get that desired effect where you create some asymmetry within the voicing. So by opening up a diminished chord, you'll enhance how the chord sounds as an individual entity, but when it comes to integrating it into a greater progression, well, that's where you have to start thinking about voice leading. Voice leading, when it comes to diminished chords, there, there are a lot of rules you can follow, but the most fundamental one is don't jump around too much as you go from chord to chord. So if you have that F sharp diminished seven chord in open voicing, uh, and you wanna go to a G minor, you know, don't jump up all the way to here, because that jump is, I mean, it can work if you're going for that effect, but it's not gonna have that smooth sound like this. That's much more pleasing. Or even if you want to add some jazzier extensions to that G chord, that G minor chord, let's say you're going from an F sharp diminished seven chord to a G minor seven chord like this. See, I'm, I'm barely moving my hands to get from one chord to the next. It, it's very, very smooth. 
And when you expand the progression with even more diminished seven chords, by using good voice leading, everything is, just, it's gonna sound like it's flowing. Like there's, like there's no, none of that awkwardness. So if you have something like this, that's F sharp diminished seven, going to the G minor seven, then back to F sharp diminished seven. This is just in a different inversion. And then G minor six, it's very, very smooth. I'm not jumping around. It's like I'm going up the scale with each individual voice rather than making any kind of large jumps. Again, there are other technical rules that you can learn regarding voice leading, but the most basic one is keep your voicings close together so that you're not having any awkward jumps. By the way, in that little progression I just played, I'm using the same principle that I talked about. F sharp diminished seven going to G minor. That's the seven of G minor going to the one of G minor. And then F sharp diminished seven over A is just going to G minor six. I'm using different inversions, but it's still F sharp diminished seven going to G each time. That's the skeleton of this progression. F sharp diminished going to G. F sharp diminished going to G. And this is actually G minor six over B flat. All right, so we've talked about how to make diminished seven chords sound good on their own with good voicings. We've talked about how to make them smooth going from one chord to another with good voice leading. But what if you wanna get a little bit more of that, that stank in there, some of that, that crunch that diminished chords can offer? Well, what you can do is start adding extensions. And this is where that diminished scale comes back into play. So the diminished scale is F sharp, G sharp. Remember, this is whole half then an A, then B, then C, D, E flat, and F. And within this scale, you've got the diminished chord, F sharp, A, C, and E flat. Now what's left? Those are your extensions. What's interesting is, is that these extensions actually build out a G sharp diminished seven chord, G sharp, B, D, and F. But instead of having to go through all of this harmonic arithmetic to figure out what extensions to use, a really easy way is to just look at the basic notes of the original chord, F sharp diminished seven, and think, okay, I can play any note that's a whole step up from my main notes. So a whole step up from F sharp, is G sharp, a whole step up from A is B, and so on. C, D, E flat, and F. Let's do an example. You don't have to use all of these extensions at once, by the way. I mean, you can, but I think it can be just as tasteful to include one of these extensions. Let's do an example. We'll do F sharp, A. Now let's do that open voicing I did earlier, actually. So that was F sharp, uh, C, or what, what was it? It was F sharp, C, E flat, and A. And let's add an extension. Let's pick one of these notes and add a whole step above the note we pick. So how about we choose this E flat right here and we'll add in an F. Let's hear what this sounds like. That's kind of cool. Let's now try it with a different one. Let's do G sharp. We're gonna add a G sharp above the F sharp, F sharp, G sharp, C, E flat, and A. Now that sounds okay, but I think we can make it better and we're gonna use the same technique that we used before. I'm gonna take that new note, the G sharp, and I'm gonna move it up an octave. So it's gonna be in here now. Check this out. Now we have some real crunch because of that rub between the A and the G sharp. It's a very cool sound, especially when used in context. So take for instance, this voicing. We can actually use the G sharp almost like a suspension and release, resolving it to the F sharp and then going to our G minor chord. Let's do one more example. Let's add the whole step above A, which is of course B. So we have F sharp, C, E flat, A, and B. Now that's an all right sound right there, but we can make it even better by taking the A and moving it down the octave and it opens it up. Yes, that crunch can be nice at the top, but if you want it to be less crunchy, 
you bring the A down the octave. That does give you the symmetry that we had before that I was talking about, but again, we're throwing off the symmetry because we have the A in the mix now, so it's, it's less just minor thirds. When you add that B in there, we open it up again. If you want to get really crazy, you can add multiple extensions. So let's take this voicing right here and add the whole step above F sharp again. That was G sharp, but we're not going to play it down there because that's going to be, well, it's not that bad, but it's, if you don't want it quite so crunchy, you can move the G sharp up the octave and you get that voicing, which is one of my favorites. So we're putting a G sharp. I'll write it out one more time without the scribbles right there and you can go to like a G minor 11 after that and get some really cool sounds. There's so much more you can do with diminished seventh chords. If you want to learn more, I've got a course called Diminished Chords Decoded, which you can actually get as a free bonus course included with my other course, Chord Theory for R&B Piano, which is great for jazz and all other kinds of music as well. So if you want to check out Chord Theory for R&B Piano and get Diminished Chords Decoded for free, there's a link for that in the description below and somewhere on the screen. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.